right, so let's take a look at modifying our two web parts so they can communicate with each other. And if we have, we have our directory here, we have our details here, the behavior we want is when we click on the details link that the customer ID from the directory is passed off to the customer details, and then the details show information about that customer. So the information we're communicating between the two web parts is just the customer ID. All right, so come over to our Visual Studio project. We'll right click and we'll say add new item. And here we'll define the interface. Actually, let's just do add class. So right click, add class. And here we'll define the interface for communication. So we'll call this guy I um, customer provider. And then we'll click add. And then we'll say that the thing that implements iCustomerProvider will have a property, a read-only property, which returns the customer ID, which is the piece of information that we're interested in. Now let's come over to the customer directory and we'll modify it. So we're going to make this type implement the iCustomerProvider interface. All right, this will be the provider web part. It's not required that the provider web part be the thing that implements the interface, but it is a pretty common pattern. So we absolutely could create another type that implements iCustomer provider. And then when we want to give the information over the consumer, you could use that type. But um, again, it's a very common pattern that the provider web part is the one that implements the interface. All right, so since I've said this implements iCustomer provider, um, Visual Studio would have shelled in the property for us. And let's go ahead and just paste in the implementation here. Um, this is nothing to do with web part connections. It's strictly just ASP.NET data binding. Um, when we go to get the property value, we'll go get the selected data key from the grid view, right? We'll initialize that to be empty. And if the value of the key is not nothing, then we'll return that, okay? So if we go take a look at our data source, we've indicated down here that the data key is the title and the title in the customer's list is the customer ID, right? So that's how we're gonna go get the customer ID from this web part. Now this alone isn't sufficient. We need another couple things. So the first thing we need is a function. So we'll create a public function. We'll call this guy get customer provider. And it will return an I customer provider. And we just need to say that this takes no parameters. Now the thing that implements I customer provider is the web part itself. So we'll just return me. All right. So this is the way that we can indicate that we do provide this information, but to register ourselves or declare ourselves as a connection provider, we need to attribute this method. So I'm going to say that I'm a connection provider and that, um, well, actually, I'm going to put a string in here. This actually doesn't import in the string. Um, it's really just something that's used in the UI later on. Um, and we could also do one other thing. We could declare whether or not we allow multiple connections. So you can say, I only allow one connection from me to a consumer, or I can have multiple consumers. But it is this attribute on a method that takes no parameters and returns the um, basically the connection contract here that indicates that this is a web part connection provider. Okay, so we've got that declaration done. We have the way that we can get the customer ID. So we're all good over here on the provider side. The next thing we need to do is implement the consumer. So over here on the consumer side, we're going to add a method down at the bottom here to indicate that we're a consumer. So we'll create this as a public sub. So it's a void method if you're in C-sharp. And we'll call this guy um, register customer provider. And this is going to take a reference to the interface as a parameter. So we'll just say here, um, provider as I customer provider. Okay, and then we probably, uh, let's just actually create a field up here. 
So we'll say here protected um, underscore provider as I customer provider. So we'll go ahead and just put the parameter into our field. Okay. And just like with the provider, the consumer needs to attribute the method. So we'll say here that this is a connection consumer. And then uh, just like we had in the provider, we have a string that's going to be used in the UI later on. So we'll just put the same string here, customer ID. All right, so when the um, web part manager goes to get the provider from the other web part, it's going to pass that reference off to here, right? And the thing that we really care about is the customer ID. So what we want to do is we want to pass that customer ID off as the parameter that's going to go into our camel query so that the proper customer will be selected. Okay. So the way we can do that is um, use uh, the selecting event on the data source. So well, we'll come up here and we'll choose our customer's data source. And then we'll say that we care about the selecting event. So that'll shell that in for us. And let's just rename this guy. Um, if you're not familiar with VB, the important part is here, not the name of the method itself. OK. And then we want to do is check and see a couple of things. So if the provider is not nothing, right? And really, to be very explicit, we, we could initialize this guy to equal nothing. So we know that that's the starting point, although VB will do that for us automatically. So if the provider is not nothing, and also the provider dot customer ID is not nothing. And actually, probably instead of using the is not nothing there, let's go with this way. How about string um, is null or empty? Um, underscore provider dot customer ID. Then, and let me just put that full screen. So if the provider is not nothing and also not string is null or empty, the provider customer ID, okay, so we know we have a customer ID at this point, then we'll go and say here that the customer's data source dot select parameters title dot default value is equal to underscore provider dot customer ID. Okay, so at this point, we're going to go set our um, parameter that we have here in our query. All right, so in our consumer, we've taken a method, right, that takes a reference to something that implements the um, communication interface right here, right? And then we've used that when we go to retrieve our data. So we've implemented the provider, we've implemented the consumer, we have the interface we're going to use for communication. Let's do a build. Everything's good. All right, let's go ahead and right click and choose to deploy. All right, come back over to our test page. Let's refresh it. All right, now let's put the page into edit mode. And then go to the customer directory and go to connections and see it says send customer ID to. So the text customer ID in here comes from the attribute, right? So that's where this text comes into play. So whatever text you put here is what will be shown there in the UI to um, basically initialize the communication. So we'll come back here. So we'll say connections, send customer ID to customer details. And then we will stop editing. And then now when we click on, let's click on this guy, Bergs. You can see that the details now are for Bergs. And if we click on B-O-L-I-D, click on that, we get B-O-L-I-D and so on. Right? So to review, create the interface, 
if you're using a custom interface, then in the directory, you want to have a method that's a function that takes no parameters and returns something of that interface type. And you want to attribute that with connection provider and also have some way to retrieve the information that was going to be passed over to the consumer, the, the key information here. And then in the consumer, you want to have a method that takes something of the interface type as a parameter and then attribute that with connection consumer and then have somewhere that uses the data that got passed to you. Right, so you can see total this amount of code plus really this amount of code plus this amount of code. It's not a lot to get that communication um, working within ASP.NET, really, but um, SharePoint in terms of the focus of the course.